Right, in this video I'm going to show you how to install the fuel burning heater controller. First you need to remove the cover from the battery in the fuse box. And also the cover from the fuse box itself. To carry out the installation process we're going to need a small socket set, some crimpers, some wire strippers, some small wire cutters, a small flat headed terminal screwdriver, and a pair of pliers and of course fuel burning heater controller. Now in order for the fuel burning heater controller to communicate with the fuel burning heater you need to have this red wire present from the connector. You see that I've already cut this one but it's, it comes from pin 2 on this 8 pin connector on top of the burner and that's called the W bus wire which is the communication channel for the heater. Uh, cars built after 2006 when they had a revision um, this wire wasn't included but it's not a problem you can add this wire and I'll show you how to do that in a later video. Now there's five wires you need to install to uh, set up the FBH controller. There's the positive wire um, which is the black wire with the fuse connector in line and it already has a red crimp on the end. This wire goes to this um, terminal on the main bus bar going to the fuse box. That's where you put your uh, crimp terminal. The yellow wire, which is the ignition signal wire, um, you would crimp on a spade connector, which goes in the relay pin here. This top relay usually isn't used on most UK cars, and that one, um, that top pin becomes live when you turn the ignition on. Now the black wire without the fuse holder is the uh, negative or ground connection to the heating controller and for that one on the inner wing here just by the uh, exhaust of the fuel burner heater and if you can see that with enough light there is a um, ground connection and then the, the heating controller comes with a ring crimp that fits that terminal so you can put that terminal on there. The white wire from the fuel burning heater controller uh, would crimp on using the, the bullet crimp or even better if you can solder and heat shrink it to the red wire going to the fuel burning heater. So that one there, you don't get a lot to play with, you have to snip it from the loom. The other half in the loom becomes redundant, it's not used any longer. And the wire going to the heater, you crimp your white wire from the fuel burning heater onto. Okay, to connect the blue wire, this goes on to the um, blue and pink wire behind the headlight. Now to get to that, you're going to have to take the headlight out. So first of all, you're going to need to remove the grill from the car. To do that, you've got four clips along the top here, and two underneath either side. So if you just release the clips, and the two at the front, grill comes off. Now to release the headlight we've got two metal tabs one just there and one just there and you need to lift those up using a screwdriver or some pliers to line the, hole, line the holes so the headlight will come out. Once the headlight comes out you can release the connector on the back of the headlight remove the headlight. Now the blue wire from the fuel burning heater controller connects to the uh, blue and pink striped wire on the back of the headlight plug. Here's the headlight plug. I don't know if you can see that one there just by my thumb. That is uh, the blue wire with a pink stripe although on this one it's slightly faded and it looks more like a white stripe. And that's the one you need to put your uh, scotch lock connector into to, to T in the uh, blue wire or even better if you can cut it, solder it and do a hinge heat shrink connector uh, to keep the damp out of the loom. Okay, here you can see I've actually soldered this blue wire in and I've made a uh, heat shrink connection there to keep the moisture out. So the controller has been installed now so just to summarise you've got your yellow wire that feeds up through the groove here around the plastic and up the middle of the relays you've actually got a little 
clip is almost made for the job to hold the wire in like that then you fit your red crimp that goes on to the uh, top terminal of the unused relay base there and the white wire follow it around keep it all the wires away from the exhaust and that joins on to your red wire coming from the heating controller now you would probably want to use a either solder it and heat shrink it or the the, the inline crimp I've supplied but I've used a quick uh, quick release chocolate block connector here because I'm always taking this off using it for testing purposes and also if you buy one of the Webasto um, diagnostic interface cables that also connects to this terminal so you may want to make that as a removable terminal blue wire feed it down the inner wing the back of the headlight and you've seen the headlight connection already the black wire, I don't know if you can see it in the light well, that goes to the ground connection there and the inner wing and when you first power up the box it will come up with a system active light on for about 10 seconds and go out and then that will indicate it's ready to use the box fits down in a the gap there between the fuse box and the battery right to start the fuel burning heater you need your remote and you want to push the bottom Land Rover button to turn the headlights on for three seconds. When you push that button, you'll notice the system active light will come on on the fuel burning heater controller. You hear the, the fan rev up as it does a self test, and then the pump running light will come on a few moments later. So, small amount of smoke on startup, particularly on a very cold day, is quite normal uh, because it's running rich. It will soon clear once the device reaches full speed. Now the fuel burning heater will run from e for either 15 minutes or 30 minutes depending where you set the jumper inside or until the coolant reaches 75 degrees, whichever comes first. If you wanted to stop the heater early, again with the remote control, Turn the headlights on for between uh, for about seven or eight seconds, and then turn them off again. Here, straight away, the uh, the burner has stopped, and the fan is ramping down. And then, what will happen is shortly the the, burn, the fan will speed up again and it will go into a uh, cooling cycle for about a minute and then the, the pump and the system active lights will turn off on the controller. <laughs> 